Welcome, brothers and sisters. It's good to be with you online today. We pray that you are all safe and healthy in the comfort of your own homes, or wherever you may be watching today. Speaking of homes and houses, quarantine has had us locked in once again. We have to stay indoors to keep ourselves and our family members safe in the four corners of our houses. Although we are all in our own homes and can't yet meet face to face to praise, I believe we belong to an amazing house of worship, where whatever happens, there's always joy. And that, my friends, is the house of the Lord. Today, we invite you to stand with us as a family, as we, together in this house, shout the Lord's praise. There's always joy in your house, oh God. There's always joy because you are here. So God, we pray 
Let your presence be with us every day. Let your face shine through even when the clouds are gray. Lord, we continue to praise you for you were good then and still good to this day. Lord, continue to be gracious and forgiving. We remember what you gave to show us how you are loving. God, be with us always because your mere presence is the blessing.
Hi, welcome. After almost a year and a half doing this weekly online, I am running out of ways to greet and welcome you to the feast. But I am very much grateful that you joined us and I hope you are happy to be here. If not, I hope you eventually will be happy that you hung out with us today because I believe some way, somehow, there is something for you in this feast today. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, um, the team and I are definitely happy that you are here. And we also believe that even if you may have stumbled onto the stream, that there is something in here today that will speak to you and speak to your situation or circumstance. So I encourage you, sit back, relax, open your heart, and let's find out. Amen. Amen. Um, next week, we will be holding a welcome lounge for you, our first-time guests. It will be a fun time to hang out, ask questions, get to know each other, and get to know the feast a little better. All right, it's going to happen right after the feast next Sunday, August 22. It's going to happen via Zoom, and so we hope that you are up for it. Um, do let us know that, that you're coming by um, by logging on to bit.ly slash feast at home. Again, that's bit.ly slash feast at home. Um, fill out the first time guest card and we'll, we'll see you there. All right. Now, today I want to begin by sharing with you a story that I saw online recently. The year was, I think, 2005. It was the first time Edward Martell stood in Judge Bruce Morrow's courtroom. Edward at that time was 27 years old. He was a high school dropout with a lengthy criminal record. Um, I think beginning back, way back to his uh, teenage years. So it was somehow easy to look at his record and see him as a career criminal. And this time around, he was arrested for selling and manufacturing crack cocaine and was somehow looking to spending, I think, the next 20 years in prison. Now, um, many may have seen Edward as a lost cause, and, and, and including himself in that, all right? Um, but Judge Morrow, on that day, saw a smart young man who can rebound from setbacks. So the judge said, instead of sentencing you to prison, I'm giving you three years of probation and a challenge to return next time or to return to this court next time with an achievement of some sort in your life. See, the judge believed in him and believed that he can be anything he wanted to be. So Edward was, was encouraged by this judge, by Judge Morrow's mercy and faith. Um, he, he was encouraged that someone actually believed in him and he was jolted to take on the judge's challenge to achieve something. So what did he do? He, he went back to school and pursued becoming a lawyer. Now, 16 years later, after finishing community college, an undergrad degree, law school, and passing the bar, Edward, now at age 43, um, returns to the exact same courtroom of Judge Morrow. This happened just in May of this year. He returns back into that same courtroom and this time, not for a criminal sentence, but to be sworn in as a lawyer by the same judge who gave him a second chance 16 years ago. Right after um, Edward finished reciting the oath, he and Judge Morrow em embraced each other. And this time, Judge Morrow's courtroom was filled with tears. But this time, it wasn't... Um, tears of sadness or of sorrow, but this time tears of happiness. See, the heading, the heading to this story, when I saw it, I think it was, uh, it was in an online newspaper. Um, the heading to the story was, a judge gave a drug dealer a second chance. 16 years later, he swore him in as a lawyer. Amazing story. And the reason I'm sharing this to you today is because like Edward, maybe you have fallen and failed countless of times in life. Maybe you think you've struggled and sinned way past second chances and you think there's no hope for you anymore. And maybe in this pandemic, you've tried to stay faithful and trusting God and following God, but often you find yourself faltering in fear. So may, you, may I just remind you today, if that's you, may I just remind you today that on your worst day, 
God still sees you and calls you beloved. You are God's beloved. And even if you may have lost your, your faith um, in yourself, or maybe you have lost your faith in Him, He has never lost His faith in you. He never lost faith in you. He believes in you and he, he will give you all the grace and all the chances you need to turn your life around for your good and His glory. So just keep getting back up. Keep, keep on turning to God no matter how many mistakes you make for you are being transformed from season to season, from strength to strength. Amen? Amen. So today He invites you. He invites you to continue to write with Him through your life your restoration, redemption story. And with that together, let's pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I am God's servant, I am God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Now, for our message today, we are taking a pause from our series on the Gospel of Matthew, and we are starting an all new series, a brand new series that we're believing to be relevant, practical, and helpful in these times. And the title of this new series is this. Check this out. All right, the title of this new series is Feeling Blah, Winning Over Languishing Emotions in Times of Crisis. So, how are you feeling lately? Do you feel like, do you feel blah? Do you feel meh? I mean, do you feel lifeless and lazy? Na parang wala kang gana sa buhay? Um, I remember feeling this way. Every Monday night, in fact. See, Monday is our rest day and our cheat meal day. All right? It's the day where my wife and I don't work and we usually spend the time for, spend the time for re relaxation and recreation. So I remember pre-pandemic times, we would usually go out um, to try our new, try our new restaurant, um, watch a movie, walk around the mall, sit around in a coffee shop, enjoy a good book, and things like that. So we really looked forward to our Mondays with a sense of excitement. I mean, at the end of each Monday, we would feel refreshed, recharged, and ready for the upcoming work week. Now, fast forward to our life today in the pandemic. Our Mondays are just spent stuck here at home. <laughs> Ordering takeout food, by the way, um, there's nothing wrong with takeout food, but it's not as good as dining in, right? I mean, with the ambiance and with just enjoying um, being together out. But yeah, we just were stuck here at home ordering takeout food and watching movies or TV shows online until our eyes drop. And it's the same thing over and over and over again every Monday. So somehow... I don't know, it's no longer as refreshing and recharging as it was before. And so every Monday night, when the day is about to end, and I know our work week will begin the next day, Tuesday, I don't feel ready at all. I mean, I don't even feel like working. Feeling ko parang kulang pa ako sa pahinga. I mean, and I dread the day ending. I would, look out, I would look out the window, in fact, that window. I would look out the window of our condo, see the, the lights of the skyline, and think, ito na naman tayo. It's all the same thing all over again. I work hard with no sense of fulfillment or accomplishment, only to arrive next Monday for another day, another round of stuffing myself with food and binging on films. See, I wasn't burnt out because I still had energy, physically, emotionally, right? Spiritually. I wasn't depressed either because I didn't feel hopeless, but I did feel joyless and aimless. I felt unmotivated, purposeless, passionless. And apparently, um, there's a name for what it's called. It's called 
languishing. Say it with me, come on, or type it out, languishing. And probably you've heard of that term um, from, from maybe last year or coming into this year. And what you heard is my languishing story. And maybe it sounds and it feels familiar because maybe you've been through something similar or you're going through the same thing now. So let's think about it and let's talk about it. What is languishing really? And according to um, this New York Times article, um, it says here, here we go, where is it? Oh, here we go. According to this New York Times article, languishing, all right, is a sense of stagnation and emptiness. It's the void between depression and flourishing, the absence of well-being. In fact, the article says, and I'll, I'll read on, it says there, in psychology, we think about mental health on a spectrum, right? From depression to flourishing. Flourishing is the peak of well-being. You have a strong sense of meaning, mastery, and mattering to others. Depression is the valley of ill-being. You feel despondent, drained, and worthless. So, my friends, languishing, all right, is right smack in the middle between depression and flourishing. And the article said that languishing is like the neglected middle child of mental health. I mean, you don't have symptoms of mental illness, but you're not the picture of mental health either. You're not functioning at full capacity, um, and languishing um, mostly dulls your delight, disrupts your ability to focus, and causes the dwindling of your drive and increases the odds that you'll cut back on work. In another article, it, it says, um, I'll read it to you. Simply put, we are experiencing an absence of the good stuff, all right? Purpose, belonging, contribution, satisfaction, and interest in life. So, can, can, can you somehow relate to this thing called languishing? Because, I don't know about you, but due to the pandemic and lockdown restrictions, many have or are struggling with languishing. And that's why through this series of messages with God's word, we hope to help you win over languishing and overcome the negative emotions that go with it or that causes it. And what are these emotions? Emotions like frustration, and we're gonna talk about that today in talk number one. Um, emotions like paranoia, talk two. Loneliness, talk three and grief, talk for. So today, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about frustration. And one definition of frustration says, frustration is the feeling of being upset caused by the inability to change or achieve something. So you have a goal, you got a dream, and you feel disappointed that there's no progress. I mean, you desire change and you feel annoyed that nothing has changed for the better. I mean, you have an outcome in mind and you feel somehow let down because the actual outcome was nothing like what you had in mind. So basically, frustrations are unmet expectations. And we had a lot of that. We, we had a lot of that in 2020. Do you agree? I mean, coming into, the 20, into 2020 was a new decade. I mean, people were believing for 2020 perfect vision, remember? And people were believing it's gonna be their banner year. Then bam, boom, <laughs> COVID came. And all of that were up in flames. Many plans were foiled and many people got frustrated. Like weddings. Um, you know, my wife uh, is an events host and she usually hosts weddings. And she was telling me that one of her clients was set to be married last year, all right? And of course, because of the pandemic, they had to reschedule due to quarantine and event, event venue restrictions. So imagine the hassle. I don't know, I, I, I for one remember the time when uh, we were gonna get married. So imagine the hassle of having to rebook all your suppliers, right? Catering, photography, makeup the hassle of informing your guests, the hassle of um, having everyone tested so as to be safe. I mean, imagine all of that. So they did that, they did that because they had to reschedule. They aimed for a new date only to be canceled again 
due to another lockdown in the latter part of last year. And because of this, um, the couple decided to or opted to have a house wedding, a simple house wedding, and postponed the big wedding with family and friends to this year, 2021. But I'll tell you, even that got canceled because, again, of all that's happening. So they got so frustrated that they won't even push through anymore with the big wedding celebration. Right? So things like that. Another example of, of frustration during this pandemic is mobility and travel. And I know you can relate to this. I mean, for, for us, it's frustrating that my son, Kyler, can't see and enjoy the outside world. <laughs> I mean, it's frustrating for many who, who can't go on a much-needed vacation. I included. <laughs> All right? It's also frustrating, I mean, I don't know about you, but it's also frustrating wearing a mask where you can't breathe well and the shield that fogs up and distorts your vision every time. I mean, it's, it, it's frustrating. Now, I know the, these little frustrations are nothing compared to the frustrations other people are going through or feeling at this time. Like, I know some people are frustrated with losing their jobs, getting a pay cut, I mean, or their businesses closing down. Some people um, feel so much frustration with, with government, with the vaccination rollout, with cases rising, with the irresponsibility of others. Some are even frustrated with their family and their friends, maybe even in their marriage, with their children. And it's sometimes like, I don't know, sometimes it's just like, it just keeps on coming, right? One frustration after another, after another, after another. But let me remind, let me remind you with this, or let me remind you this. That frustration is normal, right? Frustration is normal. Frustration, unmet expectations, not getting what you want is all part of living. Because we live in an imperfect world and we ourselves who live in this world are imperfect. So frustration for us human beings is normal. So what do we do, all right? What do we do when we get frustrated? Do we just call it quits and we leave? I mean, when we're hurt, do we just break the relationship? Or when our loved ones fail us, do we just give up on them? Or when we're discontent with a job or with a project or with our business, do we just resign? Do we just give it all up? Or, or, or when things are not working out um, the way we want it, the, the things are not working out for us, do we just bail out? I mean, when life is hard, do we just run away? And I hope your answer to those questions would be no. Because, listen to this, while frustration is normal, living with frustration builds character. I'll say that again. While frustration is normal for us human beings, living with frustration builds character. See, crisis builds character. Difficulties build character. Failures, whether it be yours or others, builds character. I remember um, Bishop Sok Villegas said this in a beautiful homily. Where is it? Here it is, here it is. He said this in one of his homilies. He said, if we are not seeing enough growth in our lives, could it be because we cannot live with frustrations anymore? It's a good question to ask, right? I mean, think about it. If we're not seeing enough growth in our lives, if we're not seeing progress in every area of our life, could it be because we cannot live with or deal with frustrations anymore? In other words, maybe the reason why you're not growing anymore is because you easily give up on your frustrations. I mean, faced with frustrations, sometimes we throw in the towel, we complain, and we just whine online, right? But I believe, by God's grace, you and I can learn to live with frustrations. And when we live with it, it'll build our character and make ourselves better out of it. So what do we do? What do we do with our frustrations? Well, as I said, we live with it. Right? We live with it. Tag a person on the comments and tell him or her, live with it. All right? Live with it. And today I'm going to share with you three ways on how to live 
with frustrations, or three ways on how to live with your frustrations, right? Number one, deal with it realistically, right? In Sirach chapter two, verse four to six, it says there, accept whatever befalls you, right? Accept whatever befalls you. And in times of humiliation, be patient for gold is tested in the fire and those found acceptable in the furnace of humiliation. Trust in him and he will help you make your way straight and hope in him, right? So there are two parts to dealing with frustration realistically. And the first one is acceptance. I mean, we need to accept reality. And reality is what it is, right? That, that's why there's this common phrase now, it is what it is. All right? It is what it is. It simply means that one recognizes and accepts their present reality, their present situation or circumstance. For example, um, whenever Kyler is crying, my son, and needs to be calmed down, um, there was a time that the only thing that soothes him is breastfeeding. So for a time, Vea seemed like the only solution to that. All right? And in my desire to help Vea and be there for my son, Kyler, I would tell Vea, kung pwede lang sana, um, kung pwede lang talaga sana, ilipat natin yung boobs mo sa akin at ako magpapadede kay Kyler. Right? I, I really said that. But you and I both know that that's impossible. So that's a reality that we can't change. And it's, it's, it's a reality that Vea and I had to accept. That Kyler had to accept. I mean, it is what it is. Now, that's just for comic relief. And I know there are other tougher things in life to accept. Like, let's say, the passing of a loved one. And recently, recently again, my story is with Kyler. Forgive me, I'm a new dad. But anyway, recently, whenever Kyler would, would have a milestone moment, like when he, would begin, he, when he began to stand, crawl, laugh, eat. I mean, Ve and I would be so happy. But sometimes I get teary-eyed by the fact that my dad who's now in heaven, will never get to know Kyler here on earth. And Kyler also will never get to know his Lolo. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. It makes me sad. But this is a reality that I learned to accept. So, my friend, to grow in acceptance, we have, we have to come to the realization that it isn't what happens that causes our frustrations. It's our reaction to what happens that causes frustration. I'll say that again. It's not what happens that causes our frustration. It's our reaction. It's how we respond that causes our frustration. It's how we respond to the situation, the circumstance. It's how we respond to what happens. I mean, it's like being stuck in traffic. I know maybe you don't feel that these days, but pre-pandemic times, we felt that a lot, right? Um, it's like being stuck in traffic. You've got, um, let's say you've got to go to work or to a meeting, but you're stuck along EDSA, bumper to bumper, and all you see is a sea of brake lights lighting up red. No one is moving. It's all a complete standstill. Now, in that moment, I mean, you can react with anger and frustration. But I'll tell you, no amount of anger and frustration will be able to change your situation. It won't move the vehicles in front of you, right? So the bottom line is that you're stuck. So there are two ways to go. Either you get angry and frustrated, or you accept it and be at peace with it. Because you really can't fight what is. You really can't fight what is, especially in that moment. So we got to accept it, right? And you might be thinking, Mike, so... Does accepting mean just giving up and being fatalistic and just throwing things up in there and say, bahala na, come what may? No. Accept that, yes, there's a pandemic. Accept that our lives are inhibited. I mean, accept that people will fail you. Accept that nothing in this world is permanent. Accept that your version of your dream may not be the best version. Accept, 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 accept. But acceptance doesn't mean abandonment. Again, acceptance does not mean abandonment. Acceptance means this. means, okay, this is the reality. Where do I go from here? Right? 
This is the reality. Where do I go from here? How do I move forward? So, my friends, we need to accept the way things are now and operate from a place of peace and then creating and growing from that position, from that position of peace, from that position of acceptance, right? The second part of, of dealing with frustrations realistically, if the first one is acceptance, the second part of dealing with frustrations realistically is managing expectations. And I remember my mom for this because she would always tell me, frustration is a function of one's level of expectation. And let me, let me illustrate this, all right? Check out this meme on fast food. So the, maybe you've seen this already. Expectation is that you're gonna get a big juicy burger with fresh vibrant vegetables, just like what you see in advertisements. But in reality, this is what you get. Here's another one. Um, for the women, let's say you're going for that pixie cut, and, and alam ko na uso yan for a while. You're going for that pixie cut, and let's say these are your pegs, right? These are, this is your expectation. But when you come out of the salon, you end up looking like Jim Carrey in the movie Dumb, Dumb, Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Last one. This is what happened to our travel plans, all of our travel plans, you and me, in, in 2020. I mean, expectation was to see the Sydney Opera House. Reality is, um, you're seeing simply a dish rack shaped like the Sydney Opera House in your home, in your kitchen. Again, frustration is a function of one's level of expectation. In other words, if your expectation is here, all right, and the reality is here, all right, then you'll definitely be frustrated. But if you lower your expectation down, here, all right, and reality is here, then you somehow lessen your frustration or you might not even feel that much frustration anymore. Now, you might violently react and say, Mike, are you saying I should lower my expectations? I should lower my standards? Well, yes and no. What I'm saying is, yes, lower your expectation but don't lower it to a level of mediocrity. Lower it to a level of reality. See, what may be frustrating for you is that your expectations are too high and it's unrealistic. So, so you need to manage your expectations and have more realistic expectations. You need to assess the situation, engage and see. What is possible given your circumstances or given your circumstance and your resources? Let me give you an example, right? Um, during our first few months of having Kyler, I still had this expectation that I will get good, a good night's sleep, a good night's rest. And what that looked like in my mind, my expectation was that it would be sleeping straight seven to eight hours and comfortably. Now, those of you parents, um, no, that's not gonna happen, right? Um, now those were, but those were my expectations. Um, and now they have been made more realistic. <laughs> because with an infant, Kyler, um, co-sleeping with us, sleeping beside us, those expectations are now definitely hard to achieve. So my expectations are more now aligned with reality. And reality is, um, we sleep five, six, seven hours with sleep interruptions in between and mostly I'm sleeping at the edge of the bed because Kindler starts out sleeping vertically but then ends up in the, at the middle of the night sleeping horizontally. So that's the way it is. So with the lowering of my expectations to the level of reality, my frustration has also lowered. You get my point? Now, I'm not saying, all right, I'm not saying that uh, wait, let me just recall my thoughts. Okay, I'm not saying that you can never aim and reach high, reach high expectations. I'm, not, I'm never saying that you, you can reach for the stars and reach for, for your ideal expectation. I mean, you still can. And you can still do that without feeling frustrated. The question is how? Well, let me give you a practical handle to this. And maybe you can try it out as well. Here's how you can, I mean, 
aim and reach high expectations without feeling frustrated. You can raise your reality first and your expectation second. Then repeat. Raise your reality first and your expectation second. What do I mean? In other words, accept your reality. I mean, accept your reality of what it is now, but work on it and do what you can to improve your reality. And once it does, you can level up your expectations slightly higher than your new reality. Then you work on your reality again, and then you raise your, then when you work on your reality again, it improves, and then you raise your expectations a little, and so on and so forth, right? Um, things are progressing, things are getting better slowly. As you raise your reality and your expectations slightly higher than your reality, one after another, right? So, so what I'm saying is you're able to reach your goal with your frustration doing that, um, and you're able to manage it and keep it in check, all right? And I guess it may happen slowly, but again, you're able to reach your goal with your frustrations managed and in check. Again, you raise your reality and your expectation follows next. And you put that on repeat again and again and again and again and again. Right? Get my point? Good. One more tip. One more tip on this. And I, and I learned the seed of this idea from Brother Bo. It is this. Managing expectations is not just about lowering expectations. It's about expanding expectations. So another way of, of managing expectations is to expand your idea of success. That's what I mean, right? If you only have one way to measure success or, or one idea of success, the moment that is not fulfilled, you'll get frustrated. You'll get disappointed. So have more ways to measure success. Have more ideas of success. Consider more things as wins, no matter how small they are, and celebrate those wins. Because doing this will not only keep your frustrations at bay, but it will also help you grow in gratitude. Amen? Amen. Now, the first way of, of how to live with frustration, we said, was to um, deal with it realistically. Number two is to deal with it rapidly. And speaking of rapidly, this uh, will just be a quick point, just as its, just as its heading suggests, all right? In Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 15, says there, Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, are vineyards that are in bloom. Maybe it's a new passage you're hearing, but it's always been in the Bible. And you might be wondering, you might be wondering, what do foxes have to do with frustration? Right? Well, according to Brother Arun, this, this verse means taking care of small issues right away. I mean, taking care of these small issues before it gets bigger and bigger and it becomes overwhelming. So what this verse teaches us um, when, it comes to, um, when it comes to frustration is this. That when it comes to minor frustrations, we ought to deal with it right away. All right? I mean, we ought to deal with it right away while it's still small nip it on the bud while it's small because if not it could pile up and overwhelm you right it's just like having a bad day caused by a series of unfortunate events like let's say you overslept and this has happened to me many times you've overslept and you woke up late because for some reason the alarm you set didn't go off and so now you're rushing um, and so instead of making coffee you had coffee delivered but when it arrived the cup was drenched because the coffee leaked and all that was left was half of the cup, right? So, hassle, right? Um, and then, so you fire up your laptop to work, but then suddenly, you, you, you realize that your internet is running at 0 0.5 Mbps. Okay? So, again, frustration after frustration. Then, then you finally get your internet to work and run fast. But then, while you were fixing it, you forgot that the bread that you were toasting um, was left in the toaster, and so when you, get, when you got back to it, it's now pitch black burnt. So many frust frustrating things have already happened, and it's just the start of the day. And if you don't deal with it 
as it happens, it will snowball and eventually ruin and destroy your entire day. So, in fact, f- filled with frustration, you might even blow your top at some point. Right? So I hope you're getting what I'm saying. So you want to deal with it while it's small, one after the other, before it piles up on one another and compounds and things get out of hand. Now, you might ask, Mike, what do you mean by deal with your minor frustrations? Well, I simply mean address them quickly. If there's a suitable and reachable solution to the frustration, solve it right away. Because some people, when, when they're frustrated, they sulk, they complain, and they waste so much energy getting angry when they can actually do something about it. And I'm guilty of this. So here's what we ought to do. Here's what we ought to do. Don't have a fixation on frustration. Don't have a fixation on your frustration. Fix it. Right? Address it as soon as possible, as much as possible. Now, if you can't fix your frustrations externally, right? you got to fix it internally. Right? If you can't fix it um, externally, fix it internally. In other words, there's no, if there's no way to quickly remedy the issue, you need to accept it, as we learned earlier. You need to accept it, move on, and trust that things will eventually work out for good. And with that, this leads me to actually our third way of living with frustration, and that is you need to deal with it restfully, right? Deal with it restfully. Let me go now to John chapter 16, verse 33, from the Passion Passion Translation, says there, Jesus says, and everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you, and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. You know, um, what could be more frustrating, right, than this pandemic dragging on, right? I mean, right when things seem to be getting better, I mean, Cases were going down, restrictions were being, were being eased up, and the economy was beginning to open up. I mean, we were looking forward to Kyler to go out already and get to know family and friends that he had, has never met yet, and, 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 and just somehow have the sense of normalcy with our lives. I mean, that was what was somehow slowly happening. That's what we were all slowly easing into. But then suddenly, The threat of this Delta variant causes cases to rise. um, And again, it puts us back on lockdown. It's really disappointing. I mean, it's really, really frustrating. And to tell you quite honestly, sometimes I just want to give up. I just want to give up. But that verse that we just read is the truth that I rest on in the face of my frustrations. Jesus says, I have conquered the world. I, I love that line. And one biblical commentary says, says this, I'll read it to you. One biblical commentary about that line says, he said, um, the commentary said, Jesus has taken away the power this world has to defeat us and has conquered it for us. Peace is resting in his victory. Peace is resting in his victory. And so, in the light of our frustrations, the Lord reveals that in this world, we will experience frustrations and failures. But then he assures us that we can trust him with our frustrations and have peace because through him, we can overcome our frustrations. For he himself is victorious over them all. Again, through Him, we can overcome our frustrations and that's why we can put our faith, our hope, our trust in Him and we can have peace. And the reason why we can overcome our frustrations is because He who lives in us, who lives with us and for us, who is for us, He Himself is victorious over them all. Amen? Now, 
let me just clarify something, all right? When I mentioned earlier about lowering your expectations, I think um, a thought came to mind. And maybe some of you thought it too. And the thought is this. As people of faith, is it okay to lower expectations? I mean, shouldn't we have expectant faith? And so after um, taking some time to really ponder on this question with the Lord, here's what I got. And here's what I want to share with you. Most of our expectations are with men. Most of our expectations are with this world. Um, we're, we have expectations with people. We have expectations with the government. Maybe you have expectations with your company, your community, your family, just to name a few. And all of these people, all of these things will at some point fail you and thus frustrate you because they didn't meet your expectation. So don't put your faith in people. Put your faith in the Lord. In Psalm 146, verse 46, it says, Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. So here's what I want to say, right? Manage your expectations with men and magnify your expectations with God, right? Manage your expectations with men and magnify your expectations with God. For God is mighty, God is good. And according to His Word, His Word says that He is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. And so, Believing that, right? Knowing that allows us to rest in trust with the Lord. I mean, surrendering to Him in faith our frustrations and believing that He will work all things for good and for His glory. Amen? Amen. But again, um, let me just qualify that, all right? Because God doesn't always live up to our expectations. And I'm sure you, you've noticed that already if you've, lived, if you've lived and followed Him for some time now. I mean, God doesn't always live up to our expectations, but He lives up to His Word, right? So we need to align our expectations to the plans and promises of God. We need to align our expectations um, to the will of God, to the Word of God, yes? But Mike, what if my frustrations is with God. What if I'm frustrated with God Himself? Well, I'll tell you, um, that's another talk altogether, but allow me just to say this briefly out of my own experience of being frustrated with Him. And it's this, take out your frustrations on God. It may sound, might sound controversial, but I'll tell you, take out your frustrations on God, especially if it's Him you are frustrated with. I mean, complain, lament, and get angry if you need to get angry with God. I mean, He can take it, wrestle it out with Him, and eventually you will discover for yourself that God did not cause your frustrations, but He understands them. And He knows what He's doing, even if we can't always see it. So my friend, it's always best to trust and rest in His love. Trust and rest in His love. Amen. Amen. Let me close with this story. One day, Mr. Oyster was comfortable chilling on the ocean floor. Right, Oyster. He was enjoying the beautiful scenic view of the coral reefs and, and the deep sea creatures swimming around. When suddenly, a, a particle or a parasite known as an irritant entered his shell. At first, he, he tried to wiggle it out and to shake it off, but it wouldn't go away. And soon, he, he felt discomfort in his shell, and it caused him pain. But nothing he did made the pain go away. And so he simply learned to live with it. Eventually, um, after some time, he felt 
a circular ball forming up inside his shell. And with, with that happening, this caused him even more pain and even more discomfort. But then one day, after a couple of years, he opens his shell and discovers a beautiful, shining, iridescent ball called a pearl. Now, why did I share with you this, this parable about a pearl, right? Um, here's why. Because like how oysters painfully produce pearls, sometimes God allows painful irritants. Sometimes God allows painful frustrations in our lives to form something beautiful in us and through us. Yes. In fact, if you think about it, many breakthrough innovations, whether it be in science, in business, in ministries, or in other fields, many breakthrough innovations that's blessing people in the world today was or were born out of discomfort or frustration. Or let me say it again. Many breakthrough innovations that's blessing the world today was born from the discomfort of frustration, right? So, so rather, think about this, rather than letting frustration discourage you, let your frustration fuel your faith in a God who can convert that frustration into a force of good. Amen. Amen. Now, as we pray, let's pray this prayer that I believe will help us win over frustration. And maybe you've heard this prayer and you've prayed this prayer before, but I pray that you would pray it once again in the light of this message, in the light of the Word of God that has been preached to us, to pray it with your heart. That's called the serenity prayer. So together, let's come in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And say this after me. Pray this after me. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you guys for joining our feast today and thank you as well for your faithful and consistent generosity to sustain this ministry during this time. We are indeed blessed and it allows us to continue to stream the feast and continue to be the community, um, to be here with you and to journey with you as we continue to grow closer in following Jesus. So thank you very much for your support. Um, these are the different ways that you can give online to continue that financial support. And we hope that as you give more, that indeed it, it, it expands your ability to love, that you're able to love more and in that, that in itself blesses you. But of course, God will never be outgiven in generosity. So you can expect that you will be blessed more as well. Um, so thank you very much. So have a great week ahead. I, I hope some way, somehow this helped you um, manage or live with your frustrations. And again, continue to hold on to the truth that we can overcome our frustrations because we follow and we have within us Jesus who have overcome every frustration, the worst frustrations in life um, through the cross. So again, God bless you. We'll see you next week.